Dr. Joe Dispenza. His unique approach to healing and self-development has captured the imagination of millions of people worldwide through his conferences and guest spots on some of the biggest podcasts in the industry. Out of the infinite potentials in the quantum field, they're selecting the worst possible outcome. But this has not been without criticism. At the core of Dr. Dispenza's teachings is a belief that the human brain and body are capable of profound change through meditation and positive thinking. He integrates concepts from quantum physics, neuroscience, and mind-body medicine to demonstrate how our thoughts and emotions directly affect our health and well-being. According to Dr. Joe, we can develop powerful meditation practices that allow our brain and heart to tap into an invisible, all-powerful quantum field around us that provides healing, longevity, and manifestation of our deepest desires if we can communicate with it in the right way. His critics argue that his claims lack scientific rigor, that he uses too much anecdotal evidence instead of empirical data, and he gives a potential for false hope of healing when people have serious medical conditions that require more of an evidence-based medicine approach. Whether you are trying to manifest riches, heal from debilitating illness, or just feel like you are in line with the universe, his books, lectures, and meditation protocols may inspire you to try to rewire your brain and body for success. In this video, we'll take a look at his background, what is and what isn't proven science in his protocols and some of the latest research backed by the University of California, San Diego that tries to answer the biggest question of all, can you trust Dr. Joe Dispenza? For those of you new here, welcome to Tech for Psych. I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, a US Navy trained physician. I don't usually make these types of biography pieces, but this new research out of UCSD that we'll take a look at here soon is make me think twice about what Dr. Joe has been teaching over the years. As for Dr. Joe's background, we actually know very little. We know that he received a doctor of chiropractic degree from Life Chiropractic College in Atlanta and ran a clinic starting in 1988. But that's where things took a turn off the beaten path. At the age of 26, he was unfortunately hit with a car while riding his bike and told that he may never walk again after suffering severe vertebral fractures that threatened his spinal cord. In that moment, Dr. Joe had to decide whether to undergo a neurosurgery that would fuse his spine together to protect his spinal cord from bone fragments and protect him from paralysis, but also permanently limit his mobility, or forego the neurosurgery but risk complications and just trust in his body's ability to heal itself through meditation, rest, and gratitude. He chose to forego the surgery, trust in his meditation and healing, and the rest is history. Since 2007, he's put out a slew of educational products to teach you how to harness your mind towards health, wealth, and happiness, which include his best-selling books, You Are the Placebo, and Becoming Supernatural. When I was preparing for this video, I reread Becoming Supernatural. Supernatural, and I watched his series on Gaia, Rewired with Dr. Joe Dispenza. Right off the bat in Rewired, there's some pretty massive claims about people being healed from cancer, Parkinson's disease, and other serious medical conditions by going through Dr. Joe's meditation protocols. Now, I'm all for using alternative and complementary medicine methods for chronic diseases like pain, inflammatory conditions, and autoimmune disease. We know that current pharmaceuticals can be quite limited in treating these chronic conditions, they can have side effects, and we know that limiting stress alone can be very helpful. But I think where it starts getting dangerous is where people turn down mainstream treatment in favor of these practices instead. And I think that a lot of his critics are concerned about that. Now, at no point during his series does Dr. Joe recommend turning down mainstream treatment, and there is a disclaimer at the beginning of each video that the content's educational and should not replace the consultation of a qualified healthcare professional regarding health concerns. So I did appreciate that from a medical doctor point of view, and I do think that he generally recommends doing these techniques along with mainstream medicine in most cases. A big cornerstone of his teachings is helping people learn how to manage and limit stress. This makes a ton of sense. We've learned a huge amount over the last 20 years about how large amounts of psychological stress cause biological damage throughout the body right down to the cellular and genetic level. But then he leaves scientific evidence behind by proposing that the universe itself responds to people based on their stress levels. 
First, he gives a lovely and accurate description of how stress flips us into chronic fight or flight mode. This drains our energy, releases stress hormones, disrupts sleep, causes weight gain, and ultimately poor protein synthesis for cellular repair, which leads to premature aging and disease. But Dr. Joe would argue that limiting stress not only helps heal the body, but also encourages the body to draw healing energy and power from an, an invisible quantum field that surrounds all of us which hasn't yet been proven by science. Intuitively, we know that there's some life force that drives our biology towards health and vitality and reproduction, but that does start to cross over into spirituality because we just don't have a clear scientific explanation as a primal driver for life yet. A lot of his coursework focuses on the brainwaves of meditation, which I think is great. They have done very interesting meditation brainwave studies at their conferences using EEG and have the results reviewed and validated by Bond University out of Queensland, Australia. And Dr. Joe is absolutely correct when he explains that during meditation sessions, people's brainwaves slow down. They go from faster beta brainwaves to slower alpha and theta, and they become more coherent. We know from fMRI studies that more distant parts of the brain start communicating more with each other in these meditation states, and that the slower brain waves tend to be a primary driver of information exchange over longer distances in the brain. This has been well established in neuroscience. But Dr. Joe would argue that the slower brain waves of meditation allow a person to subconsciously interact with the quantum field to obtain intuition and guidance from information contained within the field outside of the human mind, which this is just another example of trying to bridge scientific evidence and spiritual beliefs. What we do know from research highlighted in Matthew Walker's book, Why We Sleep, is that slowing of brainwaves in sleep in altered states does allow the brain to assimilate information and problem solve. This is why people often have new ideas when they wake up in the early morning or relax in the shower. And new physics from quantum computing suggests that information can be held in a superposition outside of classical Newtonian physics. But the new age theory that the human mind can pluck novel information out of a quantum field like an apple from a tree has not yet been proven. Dr. Joe also claims that increased brainwave coherence leads to increased coherence in the rhythms of the heart. This is actually really well established. As we relax into slower brain waves on the rest and relax parasympathetic side of the nervous system, this changes the tone of the vagus nerve, which helps relax and lower heartbeat and increase something called heart rate variability. In fact, there is a whole industry popping up around HRV measurements that are a great indicator of health and fitness with whoop, Apple Watch, Aura, and Garmin all able to take those measurements to varying degrees. But Dr. Joe claims that this results in an expanding biofield around our heart, which is three meters wide and has a positive impact on the universe and the people in it and that we can expand this even more with gratitude practices. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that our mood and behavior has positive or negative impressions on other people. In fact, I think it's pretty obvious that our vibe projects around us and that other people can pick up on it. But is that due to their interpretation from their five senses, or is there some kind of extrasensory perception going on? And to be honest, I myself feel these energy fields that he talks about when I meditate every morning, but that's my subjective experience, and I'm not sure if that's just sensations from my brain or if they're actually out there in physical reality. This field of energy and information that supposedly surrounds us has just not been proven yet scientifically. We just have a lot of trouble measuring this phenomena and have been trying to do so for years. There's Curlian photography that's been around since 1939, where objects are placed on a photographic plate and subjected to high voltage. You get these patterns that reportedly show their aura and energy fields, but scientists just say that this is an electrical discharge pattern that's a result of moisture, pressure, and other variables. More recently, there's been interesting work done with gas discharge visualization and other techniques, but there's problems with reproducibility and validity of confirming that these fields are affected by human thoughts or emotion. I can tell you for a fact that none of these techniques were discussed in my medical school or residency training. It does doesn't mean that there's not anything there, it's just that we haven't been conclusively able to prove it with science yet. There are some new developments like black body radiation measurements that look promising for measuring some kind of field emitted by humans, but there is a lot of work to be done to validate those measurement techniques. And as for Dr. Joe's other content, 
There is so much that needs validation. He talks about running energy currents up the spine through Kriya Yoga techniques. He talks about tapping into the crystals of the pineal gland to form communication pathways with the quantum field. He talks about transforming your mind from particle Newtonian physics to wave properties of quantum mechanics. A lot of this has just honestly not been supported by mainstream science and should be looked at through a lens of spiritual guideposts rather than actual science. Which is disappointing because I love what he talks about, it's just that we need better tools to confirm if those effects are actually there. So is there a way to reliably look at these practices to see if they actually are helping with people's health? That's what we have Dr. Hamal Patel and his team from UCSD to thank for. Over the last 10 years, it's been proven that the relaxation response from various meditation practices turn on and off thousands of genes related to immune function, metabolism, and antioxidant capabilities. But it's been difficult to translate that research into real world practical results on people's health. But just this last year, Dr. Patel and a group of researchers associated with UCSD and the San Diego VA took blood samples from attendees at Dr. Joe's conferences and showed that the blood from the more experienced meditators was more resistant to viral infection than those that who did not meditate. And incredibly, there was a meditation dosage effect. The more that they meditated, the more resistant to the virus their blood was. The meditations were actually creating proteins in their blood that made them more immune. To be honest, I don't even want to say what virus they tested out of fear that this video is going to get canceled by the YouTube algorithm but I'll put a link for the study below so that you can read it and make your own conclusions. In my conversations with my friend, Dr. Nico Regente at the Institute of Advanced Consciousness Studies, he said that these studies are quite exciting because they are robust. Dr. Patel showed the effects in multiple different ways and the paper was peer reviewed and published in the Journal of Brain Behavior and Immunity. So as we progress into the science of the 2020s, there are many new studies coming out that support a lot of Dr. Joe's claims. He certainly is helping a lot of people who claim to have benefited from his practices. And the debate around his work is part of a larger conversation about the role of alternative therapies, the power of the mind in health, and the intersection of science and spirituality. It's important to approach his teachings with an understanding that the protocols certainly can help you in life, but they might not be the end all be all of how we should approach medicine and healing. For me personally, it can be difficult to believe his claims of miraculous healing at the events of in his conferences, but overall, I think he's helping a ton of people and I am more than happy to continue looking into his practices with our latest scientific understanding of his protocols. On this channel, I plan to have more videos that test the slowing of brain waves, heart rate variability, and other techniques like black body radiation energy fields related to these practices. If you're curious to use some of the tech at home to, for instance, measure your own brain waves, check out this video here and I'll see you on the other side.